guess that I'm speaking, but I'm, <laughs> you never know. Here we go. We will find out momentarily. Noctis and Evil kicking it off right now. Going to be an interesting one. Noctis gets himself that plasma yellow red spawn. So this is the problem for him, is that no weapons against Evil with all the weapons. So this is like a very good situation for Evil because he can apply some aggression. Control Noctis. Look at that catch. He almost caught Noctis there. Almost, almost, but not quite. Very lucky for Noctis to avoid that. Yeah, and I think this is a good good start for Noctis as well. He just needs a railgun, but again, he can in a position to get it. And a big miss from Evil on that railgun gonna at least allow Noctis here. He could even, if he wanted to, he could take the teleport if he's ballsy. But Evil is up there waiting, and uh, he would be ready to respond. Mega health now. There you go. There's the mega. So Noctis, despite this sh kind of kind of a shaky start, a start which has got a little bit more pressure on it than than Evil's start. He stabilized well. He managed to avoid the damage coming in from Evil, the little traps and so on. And he's gotten all the weapons. He's got himself positioned. And here we go. He's going to lock down Evil. Great direct there. Pushing himself into a stack advantage. And that's something that is, you know, in his head right now. He's like, okay, I know I have the stack advantage now. I know I can get a bit aggressive. I know that I can be the guy that takes that nasty rocket, but still win the fight. Yeah, exactly. And Noctis again, just playing on the mega health. Doesn't want to give that away. But, uh, the kind of armor stack he has, that's what's going to be most important for him. And I also don't think that Evil got a precise time on the pickup. I could be wrong, but I think he was out of view of it. So uh, still good for Noctis at the moment. And uh, the question is really, is Evil going to make a challenge on one of these items? Or are we just going to continue to allow Noctis to pick things up until Noctis comes to him for the frag? As, uh, I, that appears to be the case. It's tough because I feel like in Noctis' position, he's thinking to himself, I don't want to try to risk everything on a read. And he's just going to play it stable in a stable way. And he's got an advantage. So there he is. He pushed Evil off of that Mega. Evil took a bit of a risk there because it was much more likely not for Noctis to go for that that Mega over the red armor. So he got some nice damage there. So it's a good situation. But I feel like neither player is going to push in for anything committed unless it's so obvious to do that. And instead, it's going to just come to an extremely close fight that neither player can really predict. And that's where we're going to see things things you know actually come to perhaps a climax a first frag yeah and again now this time evil actually in position for the mega health is he going to go out or just hold it for the rocket looks like someone to hold on a brilliant opening rocket that's now tied the score actually knocked is going to have to back away now evil could push in for the frag after picking up his mega health if he wants to and the rocket to try and get away i like it but unfortunately evil ready and waiting for it and uh, there comes the frag, and again, that was the first time we didn't see Noctis prepare for the Mega Health, and that's because Evil was down there so early, 15 seconds before. Yeah. He could do it with the amount of armor he had. Exactly. And uh, the, the rocket jump up from Noctis was perfect, but it was too slow. He waited till he, he, t he had, I think, around 70 health and no armor, and he could have actually done it a lot earlier because after he took the first rocket it's really clear that there's nothing else he's going to do there so the only thing he can do without taking a lot of damage or if you respect evil's aim is rocket jump away and that uh, that was the only choice so he was a bit slow to realize that and that really cost him and look at the scoreline now five to zero yeah so quickly as well but evil lost a lot of uh, his armor in the last few seconds he will still be able to get the kills with the lg and the red armor for him. And again, Noctis doesn't have any weapons. If people wants to, again, he can just charge through. Rocket to LG. The frag would come so quickly. Health would be stripped instantly. And uh, even sticking around for this mega health. Again, Noctis kind of just needs to deal with the damage because he doesn't want to allow Evil to get stacked up and just continue the rampage. And actually, he will be able to steal away the mega. But again, it doesn't mean anything for him. But he has taken away from Evil at least. So if he can pick up a yellow, all these shards. He will, uh, you know, be in a position maybe in 25 seconds to set up an early attack on the Mega Health. Wow. That's a lot of LG damage. This is amazing from Noctis there. Um, I'm not sure how he's going to follow that up, but that I, I, you can maybe say that it was a mistake that he came back in. Again, of course, we have hindsight here. after Because he got, I think, what was it, 200 damage almost for free? And he came back in after that thinking, all right, I can take the frag. But... That is so hard to call. That situation is hard to say it's, it's a mistake or not. But great use of the rockets there. Knocks evil low again. The problem is, is that it's blood run. And if you invest in fights like this, like for that play to mean something, he's got to go aggressive again, which is exactly what he did. And <laughs> and that's and that's the thing about it. And that's why on blood run you should try to avoid those those situations. And look at that. Knocks is is happy. Okay. I mean. 
I just I, feel like if the fight, if the initial fight went in favor of Noctis, he would have been off. We would have seen the same, exactly what we saw from Evil from Noctis. I, I really believe that the way they, 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 they seem like they have. I don't want to say similar play styles, but they obviously have similar goals in mind. Judging by you know how they were both playing. Yeah, it's uh, it's. I feel like it was really really hard for Noctis to for you to really call like a mistake, like a genuine yeah. mistake. Uh, when Evil got that, because as you say, you know, it was like that really first, that first frag that kind of went to five nil, basically. So it was like really that point, because uh, because Noctis did really well up up until that point, obviously, and he he had a stack advantage. He was getting the megas, but like like you said, you know, Evil had the stack to just wait a mega for ages, and he wanted the play there. He wanted the commitment there, and Noctis was a lit, little too slow to realize that. And then when he did get in a in the fight. His crisis management was maybe a little bit slow, maybe a bit of the rust there, because he should have, after taking the first bad rocket, there's no way he can push forwards there, because to take the fight, he's going to move through rockets. He's going to move through damage. He's predictable. So evil with already a stack advantage will always win that fight. So the only thing he can do is rocket jump away, and that, yeah, I mean, he did a bit did too it, late. He got railed, yeah. Exactly. So it was too, you, need, you need to be able to take the rail um, when you do the rocket jump. So that, that was really it. So... Apart from that, he played great. And that is the kind of thing with Evil on Blood Run, that if that kind of a start happens, like a 5-0, you're, you're probably, probably dead. And yeah, I mean, that, and he, does have a, he does have a spawn button, as we've uh, figured out from watching him play Blood Run. In last, last Sunday, pretty much every spawn goes his way. But, uh, oh, well, second map, here we go anyway. It is going to be Cure. And uh, <laughs> if, if this was maybe... Seven months ago, when Cure was first, you know, being played, maybe maybe it would be okay. But this being still a relatively new map, is going to work against Noctis because the time he hasn't been playing, this one has been played a lot. Whereas when he was yeah. active, it wasn't even in the pool. So I actually feel like this is a map that really suits Noctis a lot as well because it's a it's a map where you got to be really, again, really smart and sneaky. It's it's one of the reasons why Cyphers are very good here. It it plays to Finding the the moments of your opponent's weakness, or baiting them, or trying to like think what they're thinking and and try to abuse what they want, and that is that's that's what you can do on this map very well with how how terrible some of the positions are for the items, and uh, getting that free damage in and playing in that sneaky fashion can be really important on this map. And uh, some players don't really like to think about that very much. They just they just play the items. They don't care too much about the positions. You, you know, they just fight their way out of the spots. But for the most part, it's uh, it's it's really important on this map, and that's one of the reasons why Cipher often likes to pick this one, especially against Evil. And I don't know how to how this will really go. I mean, this is probably one of Noctis's best chances to take a map from Evil, though. Yeah, I'm just really hoping his his aim is on in those fights, or he opens up with a, a great rocket um, and is able to follow through. Because again, I, I just feel like. Noctis needs the momentum. He needs the momentum. And if he doesn't get it, just going to be a, a repeat of last map, perhaps. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see how competent he is on it as uh, we wait for Evil to get back. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. So, Evil, I don't know he, I don't know where he went exactly. But, uh, but yeah. So, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Guys, uh, as Evil went, I guess, BRB for one minute, this could be a very opportune moment for you to quickly grab a snack or, or something to, to eat, a refreshment, some coffee, whatever you what you drink when you watch Quake. Almost swap those two words around there. But uh, this this is very interesting. Are we going to see more of Noctis in the future? Because he's someone that can win Sunday Cups for sure. I think I think if DreamHack were to announce the TDM tournament, yes. I hope, I hope <laughs> there is. There has to be a TDM tournament. Yeah, like I, I think uh, that's, that's the thing. I think with Noctis... You need, he, there needs to be the team mode there for him to play, for him to continue. I, I would love to know what his motivation is for, for playing face it this weekend. Maybe he's just got a sudden burst of desire to, to compete again. I mean, it happens to all of us. I, I know at times I, I want to play again. Uh, and I'm sure it's the same for you, DDK. Although perhaps oh, yeah, uh, not as much as back in the day. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully we do see him more. But, uh, I mean, what what is... You you commentate dual all the time. Uh, what is what is your preference of game mode? Like out of everything, you competed uh, in dual back in the day, but you also played a lot of TDM. For for me personally to compete in, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me personally, it's it's TDM uh, to compete in mostly because uh, I always felt like uh, TDM was just more more enjoyable for me. I just enjoyed the the team element more. Uh, that's yeah. just something for me. Dual was is very very hard, and you're you're alone. You're alone in the woods. 
in the in the darkened woods with with no one to turn to, and uh, and evil's lurking around. No one likes that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right around every corner. No, so I think it's just exactly the same with me. Uh, with Duel, it was. I mean, you could you could play Duel against people and have them on Teamspeak or Mumble or even Skype and talk to them, but it's never really the same as being in a TDM team. I feel, and it's kind of like uh, kind of why I don't feel like Quake could survive without the team modes. Like a lot of it. A lot of players they they need the the social aspect. That's why a lot of people play online games. So whilst obviously Joel is very fun to watch, and obviously from a spectator perspective, how easy it is to follow, it might be more preferable. But um, if you're online gaming, you're there for uh, I think a lot of people the community, the good and the bad, as well as uh, obviously enjoying the team dynamics and the, the strategies, yeah. and you know talking about that as well. So it, it seems like something's happened with Evil. I'm not sure exactly what is going on, but he's disconnected. So we'll give him a, a minute or two and we'll reassess the situation and we'll see if we can either get another game or you know, jump on over to a break whilst we work everything out so we can bring you guys the action and the, the, the games. But yeah, moving back onto the, onto the point, uh, Jewel did generally feel more oppressive because again like it's the you know the lack of the social element and it, it was very hard work as well when you're training Joel it's it's uh, oh actually evil's back and he's ready to go it seems yeah or just to uh, yeah. finish my point um it's it's very hard work and you when you're when you're you know rising up the ranks what is if you make one mistake especially in quake live Joel, that can set you back a few minutes and that can be very frustrating to deal with sometimes and it feels i always felt to me when i was nearing the end of, of uh playing a lot and taking it more seriously that it wasn't it, it was getting to a point where it wasn't as fun because it was very very hard to to make the the improvements and then when you do make the mistakes and you it's, it's nice to learn from them and that feels good but that can take a while and especially if you're like back then i was very bad when it came to like analyzing or looking at the game as well so i was like beating my head against the wall repeatedly so uh that's how that's how dueling was for me back then because i was a I didn't look at the game. I didn't analyze anything. I just, I just played a lot. So I'm a different player now. It's really weird. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people like to draw the comparison um, to, to sport, like tennis and things like, and chess or whatever. But in, in those, in those kind of sports, or how, again, however you want to interpret them, you've got the player right in front of you. That it's still the, the social aspect is there to some extent. Uh, it's not as repressed, whereas in Quake One v One, obviously, to some extent, you, like you said, you, you are alone. The, there's another person behind yeah. the monitor countries away. And that's quite impressive, obviously. And when you're winning, it's great. But uh, obviously to, to keep up the motivation, if you are losing, it's, it is just, it's just about winning. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Pure, pure competitiveness. That's all it comes down to. And here we go. Noctis Two, and Evil. One. They're getting ready finally on cure for this quarterfinal match of the first spring cup of this season here, which is spring. Great intro there as Noctis goes forward with the LG. He finds himself at the yellow. This, the item's up. But he goes up the jump pad against that plasma. He is insane. Why on Girls Earth would you do that? I just don't know. And somehow he escapes with his life. So I don't know if he's got some divine force protecting him, but he should be dead. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's DM6 downside where you've got a lot of space to sort of move around in the air. You're locked in like the tiniest space. Easy plasma for, for evil. And that's going to give him a huge advantage early on. And the drop down comes in. Surely going to be a fire. Noctis is going to have to hit phenomenal rockets. He hasn't, unfortunately. And there's the first one of the board. The Mega Hump has a gift straight over to the yellow. And again, he might not even pick up this yellow. He might wait to lay the spawn and go towards red armor. And uh, he's actually going to force the spawn. Here comes another one on the board. 3 to 0. Yeah, definitely. He's 3 to 0. It's a very bad start for Noctis. He's going to be cutting his losses, I'm sure of it. Uh, I just want to jump over to his pop actually, see how he handles this. He is going to go for a bit of damage. This is a good play to make. Maybe he was there for maybe half a second too long, but it actually, oh, that it was all okay. And he, ch oh my goodness, he tried to to pre make Evil predict that he was going to go onto the jump pad, onto the uh, the health bubble. But Evil was so steady on his aim. He, he was not. That's like so hard to hit that rail. Yeah, it really was. And I'm just surprised he came back on himself as well. It looked like he was determined to go over towards the Mega but then Evil came straight back. And maybe another one here as well. Five to minus one. And uh, yeah, not the, the start that Noctis really wanted, but like you said, I, I do think this is a map that could suit Noctis if he doesn't get caught with Lightning. Again. I thought this was going to happen. And there it is. There's the GG. There's the forfeit from Noctis. Evil's going to make his way through to the semi finals. 
And I think we are going to move to a break. And there you go. So, yeah, there you go. I'm not sure what else to, to say other than that. So, all right, <laughs> guys, uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more action here for the Sunday Cup. So stay with us. Don't go anywhere. There's more Quake to follow. <laughs> 